On December 1, 2020, China embarked on a historic lunar journey with the launch of the Chang'e 5 spacecraft from the Wanchang Space Center in Hainan Province, marking a significant leap in lunar exploration since the late 1970s. Weighing nearly 8 tons, the probe was engineered to touch down on the moon, drill beneath its surface, collect valuable geological samples, and return them to Earth safely. After a 23-day voyage, the Chang'e 5 lander separated from its orbiter and achieved a soft landing in Oceanus Procellarum, a vast and intriguing region near the moon's equator on its far side. Towering nearby was Mons Rumker, standing one, 600 meters high, hinting at a dramatic volcanic past for the area. This landing was greeted with global acclaim, as it marked the first time since 1976 that material had been brought back from the lunar surface. The mission's success was achieved in just 14 Earth days, during which samples, potentially around a billion years older than those collected by Apollo, were carefully extracted from beneath the fine lunar regolith. The ascent module then took off, rendezvoused with its orbiter, and together, they returned the precious cargo to Earth, landing in Mongolia on December 17, 2020. Upon opening the capsule, Scientists looked forward to uncovering the moon's hidden secrets and challenging long-standing assumptions about its dryness and barrenness. The samples included impact-formed glass beads, widely distributed and containing materials previously believed rare on the moon, findings that have captivated researchers and could revolutionize lunar science as well as future energy solutions for Earth. The landing site, Oceanus Procellarum, was particularly significant because Despite its name implying a tranquil sea, it is actually a broad, flat region of dark volcanic rock, unexplored directly by any previous mission. Mons Rumker, the landmark near the landing area, added further interest due to its suspected origins in ancient volcanic eruptions, making this region a geological treasure trove for understanding the processes that shaped both the lunar surface and its inner structure. The daring choice to land on the moon's far side required advanced communications via relay satellites, as signals could not reach Earth directly from this location. This technical accomplishment underscored the growing sophistication of China's space program, which has now demonstrated advanced drilling, robotic sampling, and orbital rendezvous capabilities. The successful Chang'e 5 mission raised China's profile among spacefaring nations and affirmed that unmanned exploration can still unveil new mysteries and spark global excitement decades after astronauts first walked the moon. The triumph of this mission stands as a testament to human innovation and opens promising avenues for future discoveries through international cooperation. These newly returned lunar samples are expected to transform our knowledge of the moon and inspire generations eager to push the boundaries of space exploration. China's Chang'e 5 lander drilled deeper into the moon than any prior mission in recent decades, seeking signs of concealed water, volcanic strata, and exotic crystals that might shed new light on our closest celestial companion. This location is particularly notable because of its unexplored character and vast geological age. Much of the rock sampled here is estimated to predate Apollo samples by around a billion years offering extraordinary opportunities to revise current theories on the moon's beginnings. Researchers are hopeful that insights from the Oceanus Procellarum region could illuminate key events such as ancient meteorite impacts, intense volcanic episodes, and the formation of the lunar crust. These discoveries have elevated the profile of China's space endeavors and energized scientists worldwide, underscoring the enduring mysteries that remain hidden on the lunar surface. The main achievement of Chang'e 5 was its deep sampling capability, marking a major step forward in lunar science. Previous missions focused mainly on surface materials or shallow dust, but this spacecraft's advanced tools allowed it to dig farther below, reaching untouched layers thought to contain unique information about the moon's early history. Scientists were eager to see whether these deeper rocks would support existing ideas or force a reconsideration of how the moon took shape. Once the lander had softly set down at Oceanus Procellarum, it began its much-anticipated operation, digging through soil and rock likely never exposed to light. These ancient layers might preserve evidence of old volcanic eruptions, significant impact events, and the cooling phases of the lunar interior. By breaking past the upper regolith, the mission raised expectations of encountering minerals, 
signs of water, or unforeseen surprises embedded far from Earth. After the samples were collected, a compact ascent vehicle launched from the moon's surface, meeting up with the orbiter to transfer its precious load before returning home. The operation had to be completed in just 14 Earth days due to the fluctuating lunar temperatures and extreme radiation encountered at the surface. The arrival of these valuable samples on Earth on December 17, 2020, was a cause for worldwide celebration. As researchers prepared to study rocks from deeper, older layers than previously obtained, many theories suggest that the Moon originated after a Mars-sized body collided with the early Earth, flinging hot debris into orbit that gradually coalesced. If true, these ancient rocks could still contain evidence of this fiery birth potentially showing chemical fingerprints that resemble Earth's crust. If they differ, established models might need revision. Thanks to the depth achieved by Chang'e 5, scientists now have unprecedented access to untouched lunar material, demonstrating both the technical feasibility and scientific reward of such an approach. This achievement sets the stage for future missions, possibly even involving humans digging further into the Moon's hidden past. The lunar material retrieved by Chang'e 5 has left experts astonished, as it comes from ancient deposits about a billion years older than those collected by the Apollo crews. Such antiquity makes these rocks a rare asset for research. By delving beneath the surface, Chang'e 5 encountered material that had remained untouched for billions of years. This old lunar substrate tells the story of how the moon gradually formed and changed. A long-held hypothesis states the Moon was born from the debris created by a massive impact between Earth and another planet-sized body. The immense heat of this event should have caused most water and volatile elements to escape. Yet, the newly gathered samples hint that the Moon is more water-rich than previously supposed. Some water and minerals were likely delivered during billions of years of impacts from space rocks, with the resulting heat fusing rocks into tiny glassy beads. Over eons, Water molecules, carried by the solar wind or deposited by incoming objects, became trapped in these beads. When Chang'e 5 drilled deeper into the crust, it unearthed these components and delivered them for study. Analysis found that while each glass bead only contains trace amounts of water, the sheer volume of such beads spread across the moon's expanse could represent an unexpectedly vast water reserve. Even more intriguing are the new crystal structures discovered within these ancient lunar rocks. Researchers have identified a previously unknown phosphate mineral that may include elements potentially useful for nuclear fusion. Although the exact applications of this mineral remain uncertain, the potential has captured both scientific and public imagination. Nuclear fusion is anticipated to offer much greater energy output compared to the fission processes currently in use, with minimal radioactive waste. The extraordinary age and cosmic history embedded within these moon rocks are gradually revealing more details about the moon's story, including signs of violent impacts, periods of intense volcanism, and the presence of valuable materials like helium-3. As scientists continue their research, these deeper, older samples from the lunar subsurface may help unravel the moon's evolution and even present fresh solutions to energy issues back on Earth. The detection of water hidden in microscopic impact glass beads was one of the most surprising outcomes of the Chang'e 5 mission. Until recently, prevailing scientific thought suggested that water would not endure on the moon because it likely escaped during its hot, early formation due to the lack of a protective atmosphere. Yet, Chinese scientists analyzing the returned material discovered a remarkably high concentration of these tiny beads, each holding traces of water. These glass particles likely formed from the intense heat when meteorites and other space debris struck the lunar surface, melting rock and shaping it into tiny spheres. Over the course of billions of years, continual bombardment has filled the lunar soil with these glass fragments. While each bead is less than a millimeter in size and contains only about 2.000 parts per million of water, their abundance means the moon's surface could store vast quantities of this resource. In fact, estimates suggest that extracting and heating lunar soil could yield as much as 2.000 liters of water per metric ton under Earth-like conditions, providing future lunar explorers with a water supply beyond just polar ice deposits. These findings mean that astronauts in the future might not have to restrict operations to the shadowy lunar poles. Instead, 
water could be harvested by simply collecting and heating lunar soil from nearly any region, allowing water vapor released from glass beads to be captured. The likely mechanism for the presence of water in the first place involves the solar. Wind, streams of hydrogen ions from the sun, interacting with oxygen atoms inside the lunar glass. Over many ages of solar exposure and impact events, this process led to the accumulation of water within the beads. This dramatically changes our picture of the moon, suggesting that substantial water resources may be found across a broad swath of its surface rather than being limited to cold. Shadowy craters. It was once widely believed that lunar water, if present, would exist almost exclusively within permanently shaded polar craters. Locked away as ice, the Chang'e 5 lunar samples have overturned this assumption. These tiny glass beads with their internal water stores are likely dispersed throughout the moon's upper soil layer. Although the water amount in a singular bead is small, collectively, they could create a significant reservoir. Calculations indicate that each metric ton of regolith might yield as much as 2. 000 liters of water when heated, meaning explorers could secure water for drinking, farming, or making rocket fuel nearly anywhere on the moon with the right processing equipment. This finding paves the way for more adaptable lunar exploration strategies, reduces reliance on Earth-based water supplies, and could make moon settlements more feasible. The prevailing theory is that solar wind hydrogen bonded with lunar oxygen to form water inside the beads during a long era of impacts and burial, distributing this water-bearing glass throughout lunar soil layers. The recent findings from the Chang'e 5 mission demonstrate that despite the moon's weak gravity and thin atmosphere, it has an unexpected ability to retain valuable resources. This realization has reshaped our understanding of lunar water thanks to the evidence that water may be present in far greater abundance. Not just in polar regions, but dispersed widely across the surface. The mission samples revealed vast numbers of impact-formed glass beads, each harboring tiny but collectively immense amounts of water. Earlier theories posited that lunar water existed almost entirely as ice within permanently shadowed polar craters. But Chang'e 5 has overturned this notion. Studies estimate that up to two. 000 kilograms, or roughly 2. 000 liters of water could be extracted from every metric ton of lunar soil by heating it under conditions similar to those on Earth and releasing the water trapped within these beads. While each bead contains only minuscule water, their presence throughout the lunar regolith scales up to an enormous collective reservoir. These glass beads are thought to be spread across the Moon as a result of approximately 4 billion years of impacts by comets. Asteroids and meteorites, which steadily enriched the upper layers of soil. Recent calculations suggest that the total quantity of water contained within lunar impact glass might be as high as 298.7 billion short tons, a staggering discovery given the Moon's long reputation as a barren world. This widespread distribution gives future lunar expeditions much more flexibility, as it is now possible to consider landing or establishing bases well away from the poles and still access enough water for survival agriculture, and even rocket fuel production. The moon's minimal atmosphere means bodies of water aren't likely, but the potential to extract and use lunar water on a large scale fundamentally alters our resource outlook. This leap in quantifying the moon's water supply has sparked a movement beyond mere exploration and toward real utilization, with far-reaching benefits for research, deeper space travel, and possibly even energy needs back on Earth, beyond water. The Chang'e 5 mission achieved a major breakthrough in lunar mineralogy. Among the material recovered was a new phosphate mineral, named Change Site Dash, Y, after the mission and the legendary Chinese moon goddess. This mineral has surprised specialists due to its suggested ability to store helium-3, a rare isotope theorized to be ideal for nuclear fusion, a process far cleaner and more potent than the fission used in current reactors. Unlike fission, which splits heavy atoms and produces hazardous waste. Fusion merges light atoms, potentially yielding massive power with very little waste. The discovery of Change Site Dash Y has renewed interest in lunar mining since its crystalline structure appears capable of trapping helium-3, offering hope that the moon could supply this elusive resource in significant quantities. The implications for clean energy are huge. Extracting helium-3 and other minerals from the moon could Experts argue, 
pave the way for abundant, environmentally friendly fusion power on Earth. There's growing speculation that these discoveries could trigger a race among countries and companies to harvest lunar resources, revolutionizing both lunar geology and the search for sustainable energy. These developments highlight both the scientific thrill and the practical promise of exploring ancient, well-preserved lunar layers, which have recorded billions of years of cosmic activity. The recognition of Change Site-Y stands as proof that the Moon remains full of surprises and could become a key player in the world's energy future, blending the goals of discovery and clean technological advancement in one stroke. Nuclear fusion offers the potential to generate vastly greater amounts of energy than current fission technology while producing only minimal radioactive waste, making the prospect of a stable, practical fusion reactor immensely appealing for providing clean and nearly unlimited electricity on Earth. The prospect of extracting helium-3 from the Moon is equally compelling, as this rare isotope is considered by many scientists to be an ideal fuel for future fusion reactors. Findings driven by the Chang'e 5 mission indicate the Moon's regolith may host significant deposits of helium-3. Some in the scientific community estimate that just 27.6 short tons of helium-3 could meet the entire energy demands of the United States for a full year, highlighting the transformative potential of lunar resources. Although the idea of mining precious fuel from the Moon once belonged in the realm of science fiction, ongoing research and lunar missions have brought this possibility far closer to reality. Should future expeditions confirm that helium-3 is plentiful and cost-effective to extract, a new era of competition may surge among nations and companies, each racing to establish lunar bases and lead the charge toward solving Earth's growing energy crisis. This changing perspective on the Moon as a trove of valuable resources is met with both anticipation and caution. Transforming lunar mining and processing from vision to reality would demand substantial infrastructure, developing technology for extraction, transportation, and refinement that might still take decades to realize. Nonetheless, the evidence collected by the Chang'e 5 team proves the Moon holds treasures that could fundamentally change how humanity powers civilization. Water preserved in lunar glass can support expanded human presence, while the discovery of helium-3 and unique minerals raises the prospect of enabling clean, practical fusion energy. These new assets mean future lunar exploration might shift from symbolic achievements to scientific and technological breakthroughs that deliver lasting benefits on Earth. Thanks to missions like Chang'e 5, the idea of powering society with lunar-derived fusion fuel has become a real prospect. Continued exploration promises even more surprises, revealing the Moon as a possible linchpin in humanity's sustainable energy future. The implications for exploration and the broader space economy are immense, with verified reserves of water and fusion-relevant minerals across the Moon. Astronauts and robotic missions would no longer be limited to landing at the polar craters, but could operate anywhere abundant beads and water-rich regolith are found. This development greatly expands the scope for establishing permanent lunar bases or habitats, as water is essential for supporting life, agriculture, and on-site fuel production. Additionally, the potential use of newly discovered minerals in next-generation nuclear fusion has stoked excitement throughout both science and industry. If these lunar materials prove practically valuable for fusion, access to abundant, Clean energy could reshape how humanity lives and reduce dependence on fossil fuels. Such transformative possibilities have already attracted the attention of powerful governments, investors, and private companies interested in the profits and prestige of lunar mining. Global interest in lunar ventures is accelerating, with China planning further sample return missions like Chang'e 6 and NASA's Artemis program aiming to bring humans back to the surface. Other nations and private teams are working on the necessary infrastructure, robotic mining machinery, energy depots, transportation systems, and support bases, hoping to pave the path for a lunar economy. The promise of extracting not only helium-3 or water, but also rare minerals has begun to encourage significant investment from both public and private sectors around the world. Such developments are shifting the Moon's role from a distant curiosity to a potential engine of economic and technological progress for the entire planet.